Hey guys, welcome back to the channel of Jimmy's Promo. Today we'll take a look at the brand new software update to Samsung One UI 6.0 with Android 14. Now this is still part of beta. This is actually beta two. The first beta of One UI 6.0 came out two weeks ago, right around August 10th, August 11th. And this beta two here actually has quite a bit that's kind of baked in. We have a whole category of everything that is brand new and updated and kind of merged. And, and then you also have this section here talking about all of the bugs that have been fixed or at least improved. And then another category here talking about some of the known issues. And one of the things I like about, you know, One UI 6.0 is the ability of doing app updates along with the software update. So it says right here, some apps can be updated along with this software update. So you can actually choose which ones to update. If there's any of these that you don't want to update right away, maybe you want to play with this version a little bit longer after this update, and then you can manually do a push update to it. You can do that through the Galaxy Store, but I'm going to leave all of them checked. So this way we just have the latest, you know, running versions of all the applications. And then down here, this is the info of this update, which is very big. It's basically 1.6 gigabytes. It does come with that security patch of September 1st, and it ends with ZWHO. So along with some of these bugs that we're about to read here in a minute, there's a few things I want to see what's going to happen and hopefully be fixed after this update too. So a lot of the times, anytime that I just swipe down on this battery widget, just because I wanted to see, you know, my notifications panel, uh, that little thing always pops up where I'm trying to resize it. If I go to this widget, if I go to this widget, you know, pretty much anywhere I go on the screen, I'm able to take a look at my notifications panel. I can do it on every single widget anywhere on the screen, except for this part right here. That battery widget for some reason has a bug where if you swipe down on it, it's basically asking you to resize it. The other thing I want to know is if they fixed this portion here. It's giving me this little bug where it's kind of showing me the application tray for a second when really it should just have the little home animation rather than popping that up. And same thing here, I, I just want to head home. This is my home page. If I swipe up here, it just stays there and it does the exact same thing. And also I want to see the extended music player here. So if we pull down the notifications panel, I want to see the extended music player that has been revamped rather than only seeing it on the lock screen. So I'm going to just take a look to see if any of those have changed after this update. I just wanted to show you what all that looked like. So this way we can take a look at it after the update. You can see if it's smooth or not smooth or, you know, still having those little issues. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do a high overview of what is new, what has been changed and fixed. And then once this updates, I'm going to go through and actually show these things that they are talking about. So first up is Samsung Health, a new look for the home screen. The Samsung Health home screen has has been completely revamped. Bold fonts and colors make it easier to see the information you need most. Exercise results are shown at the top of the screen and more feedback is provided about your daily goals for steps, activity, water, and food. Custom water cup sizes. You can now customize the size of cups in Samsung Health Water Tracker to match the size of the cup you usually drink from which is definitely helpful. Sometimes you're always just holding on to maybe six ounces or 10 ounces, but it only gives you that option of maybe eight ounces. So this way you can actually get more accurate. The camera, turn off the swipe up down to switch camera. So swiping up or down to switch between the front and rear cameras is now optional. If you're concerned about accidental swipes, you can now turn this uh, on or off inside of the settings. Studio or the video editor. And actually I ran into a problem with my video editor on here that I just noticed. I tried to merge three videos into one clip. So I basically took three clips. I wanted to make one video and it kept on crashing the gallery. So for some reason I wasn't able to basically make, we'll say a montage. So hopefully maybe that is fixed with this update as well. Basically, it says here that it is now called Studio, more powerful video editing. Studio is a new project-based video editor allowing for more complex and powerful editing. You can now uh, save unfinished products and continue editing later. You can view your entire project as a timeline containing multiple video clips. The multi-layered structure lets you add clips, stickers, and other objects and adjust their position and length easily. More saving options. When you finish trimming a video in gallery, a pop-up will appear that lets you choose between saving and overriding the current video or saving a new video as a copy. For Samsung Pass, safer sign-ins with pass keys. Use pass keys to sign in to supported apps and websites. Unlike passwords, your pass key is only stored on your phone and can't be leaked through a website security breach. Pass keys also protect you from phishing attacks because they only work on the website or app where they are registered. 
quick panel, enhanced layout for notifications. Each notification now appears as a separate card, making it easier to recognize individual notifications. Notification icons now look the same as the app icons that appear on your home and app screen, making it easier to recognize which app sent the notification. Now for the home screen, you can drag and drop with two hands. Start dragging items on your home screen with one hand, then use your other hand to navigate to the screen where you want them to drop, which is really cool. I've shown that off several times on Samsung One UI 5.1.1. For calendar, you can move events with two hands in day or week view. Touch and hold the event you want to move with one hand and use your other hand to navigate to the day where you want it to move. And then Samsung Internet, move bookmarks and tabs with two hands. Touch and hold the bookmark or tab you want to move with one hand, then use your other hand to navigate your bookmark folder or tab group where you want to move it. Now, just so you know, you don't have to use two hands. I know I had a comment where somebody mentioned that they had one hand and I just simply responded back that you can actually just use two fingers. So you can press and hold something over here, use all of your swipings with your other finger. When it gets exactly where you want it to go, then you just drop it. So you don't have to have two hands to get this done. You can just have two fingers. And really all they did was they released the option of basically that whole palm um, interference. And so it's kind of that palm rejection. So now you can use two fingers or two hands to move things around and they kind of took away the palm rejection. So this way, uh, you know, you can get more stuff done kind of like what you can do with a computer. My Files, integrated trash, trash with gallery. My Files and gallery trash features have been combined into one. When you open the trash in My Files, you'll be able to see files pictures and videos you deleted all together, along with options for restoring or permanently deleting. Copy files with two hands. Touch and hold the file you want to copy with one hand, and then use your other hand to navigate to the folder wherever you want to copy. Again, you don't have to use two hands. You can do it with two fingers if you would like. And now for the bugs category, it looks as if they fixed the shortcut key error when using keyboard. Improved intermittent and inf infinite loading and playing error in using Netflix. Fixed home app crash problem, which hopefully that's something for me. Uh, improved instability in a multi-window function of security folder, improved device selection instability in music share, improved erase action instability in using S Pen button. They also fixed execution fail of repair mode, fixed intermittent reset issue, fixed sluggish problem after software update, fixed icon disappearance problem in home screen after FOTA. Now, when it comes down to that whole reset issue, uh, maybe what they're talking about is the, the power menu. Uh, sometimes when I select it that I want to see the power menu with my side key, it actually somehow reverts back over to being my assistant. And now for the known issues, kids app cannot be installed after updating from TOS to UOS, which my guess is going from, or going basically into this beta program. Kids app is, is not running. Uh, when running the app on Dex, the color of the top bar and some apps is not displayed properly. And then when a message, message is received, the condition routine does not work. Mode and routine apps are stopped when conditions are activated. So that was the high overview of everything that is brand new. Basically now I'm just going to install this. I'm gonna play with it through the day, come back tonight and reshoot the rest of this video. So then this way we'd be able to again, take a look at every single thing that they're talking about and also see if any of my bugs have been fixed with this update. But it's usually at this point in the video that I like to state that if your brand's new here at the channel, Jimmy is Promo, you appreciate these tips, tricks, tutorials, and the latest information on your Samsung Galaxy devices. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications so you get notified for all future videos. So the update is done and complete and I'm super excited to report back that all of the bugs that I recently had is now completely gone. Everything is super smooth and the brand new features are actually pretty fun to play with. So first off, in terms of the bugs that I used to have before this update, if I swipe down on this little battery controller, little widget here, it would actually go into the whole resizing of the widget, which was super annoying. Now, as you can see, I can go anywhere on the screen as I should to pull down the, no the, the notifications panel. So if I go inside right here, there's no issues. Also, I had the bug where if I was to swipe up to go back to home, it would actually not go back to my home screen, it would actually just stay in the same screen and then it would show the app tray for a half second. Same thing here, remember on the home screen, it would actually show that app tray for just a split second and come right back home. So it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. The other thing that I was running into was, let's say that we go inside of a screen here where there's scrollable text or a scrollable anything, even if it was the calendar, if it was the gallery, if it was another reading application, if it was Google, whatever, if I went to the bottom to go back home, it would start scrolling first 
before it went back home. And then I'd have to try to refine where I was. So now when I was to swipe up and go back home, everything is running the way it is, you know, basically supposed to. Now with this update here, they were not able to add in that little extended version, like the bigger version of this little music player. I thought it would have been actually pretty cool if we were able to see everything that's new when you first pull it down once. And then they actually took a step backwards when it came down to the lock screen. I don't know why they did this, but they went back into this one here, which is the, the condensed version, the collapsed version of this. Originally with beta one, this was showing first, which is showing off the bells and whistles of a new feature, a new way of how this music widget works. So they, for some reason, took one step back on the lock screen, but they didn't make any changes on the notifications panel. I'm kind of hoping, you know, at some point we'll be able to see that extended version here uh, in the near future, hopefully whenever this beta is complete. The other thing that you're noticing here with this update is the new notification screen. So when you take a look at the notifications, it's actually going to show you the notification of the application icon, which makes it super easy and simple. So here is just a screenshot. So you got Woot, Gmail, you got your Samsung Health screenshot. LinkedIn, Google. So it shows you the actual icon now when you are in your individual little notifications areas. You can see all of these ones here is one notification, one notification, one notification. Here is two, but in the same card. And so everything is actually spread out. And it's just really cool that you can actually now see the, the actual official application on the left-hand side, which is easier to distinguish those notifications. Now, moving on to some more changes. If we go inside of the gallery, one of the cool things is on the very bottom right-hand side, when you click on this, this little sandwich, this is your little menu. You have the option here to go to studio studio is a more refined better looking video editor and it's actually like kind of like a full-fledged editor itself as a program because anything you've done even in the past is sitting here as a draft that you can actually go back into and you're able to edit it you can change it do whatever you would like to you can also see that there's uh, you know several different lines in here you can add in stickers i have audio in here i've got the video sitting here and then also too you can make any edits you can splice it. You can go back and go forward wherever you want the front or the end to be. You can also delete it if you want to. So you can actually go through and make a bunch of different changes. This little plus button, you can add in either a blank clip, you can add in images, you can add in the stickers, music, you can add in text. Uh, and then on the very top right hand side, you can change on the, the, the project settings, however the aspect ratio you would like it to be. And then you can also hit on done if you are finished. Now going back inside of the gallery, let's say that you wanted to make a quick little clip or a, a little change or trim of a video rather than going through the whole video editor itself let's say that you were to bring this you know maybe a little bit smaller or a little bit shorter of a video when you hit on the save button this will now give you two options either save so it's going to overwrite it or save as copy so this way you can still keep the original but have this shorter version as well now what they also did too was they combined the trash so let's say that you go inside of your my files and then inside of my files, you're actually able to take a look at trash sitting right here. And this is the stuff that is trash from the, the gallery itself from your camera and also trash from all of your documents of the, the my files. So everything now is kind of condensed into one spot, either my files or gallery, everything will be sitting in the exact same trash. Another change is inside of the camera. So right here, this is one that I loved. This is where you're able to swipe up or swipe down to change between using your front facing or rear facing camera. You actually now have the option to turn this off. So if you, if you, find yourself accidentally swiping and switching the cameras inside of the camera settings, you can just go right here. You can turn this off. So it's a swipe up, swipe down to switch cameras. So if you like the way that it always has worked, which sometimes when I go inside of my pixel devices, I wish I just can just swipe up, you know, swipe up, swipe down to switch the cameras. I'm not able to on that one. So I'm so used to it. I'm just going to keep it there. Now, another thing I want to show you, if you haven't seen this yet, is you can see that I have the number two. So I have a two X on there, not only for photo, but I also have it for video. So, you know, if you would like to add in a additional optical type of setting inside of your settings, just make sure that you go inside of your camera assistant. And then you have this option up here, which is add a 2x zoom option to camera. The zoom is cropped from the high resolution sensor, so it's just as good as a optical lens. Now going along with a few additional changes here, if you go inside of the calendar and if you go inside of the weekly or daily, what you can do is you can actually press and hold on something and then you're able to move it to a completely another day at another time. So uh, whatever this could have been, you could just move it one or two days at whatever time, or maybe if you wanna move it on the exact same day, 
just a different time. So yeah, it's pretty cool that you can now do this on the weekly or daily, and you can also use it with two fingers or two hands. So if you're pressing and holding and you wanna switch the day pretty easy, you can just move it just like this, and then you just basically release. And then another one that's pretty cool is you can go inside of your settings. I believe this is one that they are kind of just testing. I don't think it's fully kind of released out there because you haven't really been able to add in more applications just yet. But when you go inside of your settings, once inside of settings, you go to advanced features, then you go inside of labs, and then inside of labs, you have dark mode apps. So no matter what you are on, if it's light mode or dark mode, there's gonna be a few applications that will actually just be forced to stay in dark mode no matter what mode you are in, which is pretty cool. Now we just gotta figure out where you're able to kind of set this up, where you can add more in, and so that's just going to be maybe another area for a little bit of change. Now, they didn't do any changes with this screen here. I know some people wanted to uh, see a few changes, possibly bring this section down a little bit so it's going to be a little bit easier to use with the one thumb. But maybe we'll see that here in the coming future. But I do like the way that these little icons look with notifications. The new gallery is pretty fun. The 2X is pretty fun in the camera. Being able to have it optional, swiping up or down the switching of the lenses is pretty sweet. Moving around different things on your calendar just by pressing and holding and swiping around. So yeah, a lot of cool things that happened with this little update. One thing that I was not able to find is gonna be inside of Samsung Health. And inside of Samsung Health, it was talking about how you were able to change the size of the water glass. So it says on here that this water intake is 8.4 fluid ounces. What if you don't have a glass that's 8.4 fluid ounces? Maybe you always drink six ounces at a time. So this way, if you, if you drink six ounces, you did another six ounces, you did another six ounces. Now that number is just way completely off. Instead of it being at 18 fluid ounces, it's now at 25.3. So I don't know where you can change this. I took a look at it at set target. I tried pressing and holding here. I tried pressing and holding here. I went inside of the settings. If you know where you're able to change this number here of the water intake, let me know because right now it is set as default at the 8.4. The update stated you're able to change this fluid ounce to whatever you actually normally do on a normal daily basis. But that's all the changes and also all the fixes I ran into. Super excited, super happy for this update because now my phone is running the way it's supposed to be running, especially when I'm on a different home screen. It actually goes into the actual home screen there uh, and I don't have the little bug here and I don't have the little bug here. So again, they did a really good job with this update here too. I am pleased with it. I'm happy. It's smooth. Animations are looking good as well too. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys appreciated this video. If you guys did, make sure you guys give this thing a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, the more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.